Hello, my friends, and welcome to Your Adventure Compass. Today, we're finally doing it. We're in Branson, Missouri, and we're going to Silver Dollar City. I've been waiting for this for quite a while. We've been here for probably about four or five days. We're finally going in now, and we're gonna check it out. It's an amusement park down here that is similar to Dollywood. It's supposed to be one of the best amusement parks in the country due to its amazing theming and how well kept it is. So come join us for this very special adventure. Right here at the entrance is the Silver Dollar City logo. And check out the flowers. It's absolutely beautiful here. There's a uh, water wheel over here. They're doing photo ops in front of the big giant logo as well. There's a uh, pink Jeep over here. And there's even a gift shop right here that you don't have to be in the park to go into as far as I know. So kind of cool. We haven't really entered. This is the entrance and then we have to give our tickets up ahead so we'll do that in just a moment well guys we decided to stop inside and grab one of these giant cinnamon rolls this is one of the things they're known for here at silver dollar city and uh, it's we're gonna split it it's pretty big and uh, this is our breakfast all right looks pretty good by the way i'm wearing fans it's hot today it's like 92 Ugh. so it's gonna be a warm one we're gonna definitely do some water rides let's try this cinnamon roll The park map is called the Pathfinder, and it's like a newspaper, and it talks about different goings on in the park, different uh, things you can check out and whatnot. And on the very back of the Pathfinder is a map of the park with a complete key of where everything is located. All right, guys, so after you come in, you'll walk straight up to what they call the town square, and you'll see this uh, gazebo area over here and right in front of the gazebo is the Pathfinder. That's where you'll find your park map and the activities going on for the day right here. We are gonna start out in Homestead Ridge, which is just this direction, just to the left of that gazebo. Guys, check this out right here. He's doing a little bit of, uh, looks like he's making a log cabin, like a little bit of woodwork over here. He's fitting pieces together. And over here it says uh, Nellie's Homestead Apple Butter, just down the hill, serving fresh hot turnovers daily. And in here, all kinds of delicious looking syrups and jams and all kinds of good stuff. We have some cooking books over here. That's actually my last jar sitting right there. Who wants to go first? Sure. Now, does this have, is this spicy as well or no? Yes. Okay. It has uh, jalapeno. Well, this is a chipotle. Oh, chipotle. Chipotle so raspberry chipotle jam. Numbers. All right, this one is, you said it was mandarin? Mandarin orange. Mandarin orange. So it's like a light mandarin orange flavor that then you get the heat. Mm. Did you like that one? This one definitely has some heat, but it's good. Yeah. Got a lot of seeds in I like that one. Well, guys, that's what we get for trying out something new. It's really good. We're getting one to go. So we got the orange marmalade. I can't wait to try that out. Now we're going to walk through the uh, village here. Check this out down here. We've got some uh, goats, it looks like. Hi. He's poking his head out over here. <laughs> All right, so the guy with the goats was telling us that this home, this is actually a, a, a real home that was built in about 1916. And there was a woman who lived here in this home 
until she was 90. She never bothered with electricity or running water or any of that. You can see she's got the uh, the pump outside here. Wow, this is uh, Bertle's Cabin. Bertle Mannion and her family came to Missouri by covered wagon from North Platte, Nebraska. Bertle embodied the pioneer spirit as she lived her life with no modern conveniences but depended on her faith in God, the land, and her own wits and abilities for survival. She was an inspiration to all that knew her. Wow, check this out, guys. It's got like a metal roof. This building is over 100 years old. Holy cow. Wow. Wow, just imagine living in here. Look at this. Look, there's, there's a couple of beds in there, a little stove pipe, oven to keep you warm. Some artwork on the walls, and then this looks like this would have been the kitchen here. Uh, oven and stove. I call them ovens. I guess it's uh, really a, a stovepipe fireplace. And check out that little table. Wow. This looks like it would have been the uh, the back porch area. I highly doubt that this was uh, concrete. This was probably put in afterwards. But uh, well, maybe maybe it was because uh, it is sitting on it. So maybe this was here. I don't know. Interesting. There's also these cute little areas where they have different shows, and this reminds me a lot of kind of like a run fair, uh, the way it's set up, just kind of out in the woods, just wooden benches and whatnot. And uh, it doesn't really say, we could probably look in the, uh, the paper and it would tell us what times the shows are. But uh, this, this is kind of interesting. It says uh, McAfee's Homestead Presents the Milk Cow Gals, and it kind of reminds me of the uh, Washing Wenches from uh, Renfest. Kind of interesting here. Not quite sure what this area is here. Looks like a big barn. Oh yeah, check this out. Is an old barn. <laughs> Look at the sign. Barn dance and pie social today. And just like we saw over at Dollywood, they do have dogwood trees here with a, uh, a little plaque that explains the legend of the dogwood tree. Over here, the Oak Trail School number three. Looks like it's closed up. Can't go inside today. They probably have that open for various school events for kids. And down here we've got something else to check out. Looks like uh, looks like they might sell some western wear and whatnot over here. I see some cowboy hats. Let's go take a look. Oh yeah. These feel like they might be uh, a canvas. They're very stiff, not like the other ones uh, that we saw the other day, but they are very stiff. I believe the other ones were felt. And uh, these, these feel like they're canvas. Let's head in and take a look around. Looks like there's lots of leather goods in here. Hats. And uh, they have hats and they have handbags and even some jackets and other things. Over here, the entire area filled with wallets. And uh, these are all leather. Looks like they're nice, nice quality leather wallets. Over here along the wall, they have various holsters and belts. Really nice work. Over here, lots of belts as well. Looks like they are all 100% leather. Yep, nice quality. And over here, this leather bag, really nice quality, thick. 
good leather, 269. You have smaller ones as well. And uh, the smaller ones are 169. This would be a good, good laptop bag. Also have lots of kids belts over in this section here. And more hats. And then check these out. These are these are kind of funny. These are like the old country style hats here. This one's got a big notch cut in. And it uh, looks like these are about 45, but some of them are decorated. This one's definitely for uh, a woman or a girl. They all have kind of these uh, beat up kind of look to them. Yes. Kind of cute. Over here, check this out. Some nice leather jackets. Curious, I haven't bought one of these in a long, long time. It's not even leather. I don't see any price tags on them. I'd like to let you guys know what these cost. Here's one. Oh, not on a price. And I don't know. All the tags are on them, but there's no price on the tag. Nice looking though, and it's nice and thick. I haven't seen anything like that in a while in the stores. They also have. Uh, some of these uh, bigger top hats. A lot of people use these for the uh, steampunk type look, especially this one here. Check that out, that's kind of cool. That's 225 and that is leather. This will have some of these as well. These are a, a bit bigger than what I prefer, so I would not would not like that myself. But lots of different things in here. This one's kind of like a uh, outdoor canvas style. Looks like it's treated for rain. Here's some more leather jackets over here. Let's see if there's any prices on these. Well, this is not quite the same, but let's see, $249. Oh, this one's cool. It's got like uh, skulls across it. Is this a? No, it's not a Harley. It's Milwaukee leather. This one's two ninety nine. It's kind of neat. And it's on the back as well. This area right here sells Lye soap, and uh, if you look up there, it says the original Lye soap. Here's the seven year itch. And I do remember my grandmother making this. Now these are uh, like hand lotions and whatnot, but here is the actual soap. This is kind of what uh, hers look like here. Over here is the knife shop. It says uh, Silver Dollar Mountain. Silver Dollar City Mountain Outfitters Knife Shop. Handmade knives. They have demonstrations as well. 10 a.m. and 2.30. Let's see if we can uh, head inside and take a look around. Also says guns here too. I don't know about that. We'll see. Oh, toy guns. And rubber band guns. The U.S. Marshall badge here. It's an interesting book, the Happy Camper Cookbook. Looks like it's probably got some simple campfire recipes in here. Yeah, kind of neat. Here's some tools for sharpening your knives. And they also have honing oil right here used to sharpen blades. And they have a, uh, a kit here. It's got the uh, different blocks and the oil all together. This is a all-in-one kit there. Take a look at these. These are pretty fancy right here. Handmade. Oh, I saw a shirt I liked over there. Look at all the detail on those. Very nice. Even the leather sheath for that is just really over the top nice and there's a couple more over here uh, 
I have not seen these in a long time. They have uh, the raccoon skin caps, like Daniel Boone wore. Guys, look at this. There is a stream just running through this area. This is what I'm talking about. This is, this is theming. Theming to the max. This is just beautiful. And we're, we're just kind of walking around towards the, uh, the back of the park. Everything here is just amazing. Over here is a honey shop. They have uh, honey sticks and different jars of honey, different flavors. And right over here is the Wilderness Church. Let's go take a look inside here real quick. They do have sing-alongs different times of the day. Oh, and it's air conditioned. It feels good in here. Well, we stopped in this restaurant just to take a quick look around, see if there was a bathroom. And check this out, there's like a tree growing right through. And there's also this covered wagon area you can sit and eat. And then all of the seating is tiered. It's like different levels, really cool. And then the, there's tons of like wagon wheels and things hanging from the ceiling, very nicely decorated. Again, the theming is amazing in here. Got this area here that does woodworking. And it looks like they've made several different walking sticks and some canes and baseball bats and lots of wooden items over here. I absolutely love the theming in this park. There's a lot of ups and downs walking. So we're gonna try and keep it in a clockwise motion so we don't do any backtracking, but you never know. Lots of places to eat, lots of different types of food. Well, believe it or not, we just had lunch underneath this gazebo right next to a waterfall. How cool is that? The theming here is amazing. This is such a beautiful park. I can see why so many people have said this is the best park in America. Everywhere you turn, there's something to see. No area is undecorated or unthemed. This is what other theme parks need to learn and replicate. This entire area has fans perfect for this 92 degree day and there's even a water feature which provides a, a, just a hint of a mist in the air and uh, it's a very very awesome way to enjoy your meal all right guys well it is time to finally hit some rides we're gonna go hit uh, wildfire and there's a uh, a water ride over here too. I don't remember the name of it. I'll let you guys know when we get off. I am going to switch cameras over to the action cam and uh, put everything else in the locker so we don't get anything wet. So we'll see you in just a second on the other camera. All right, guys, we've switched over to the action cam and the two rides are Wildfire and American Plunge. We're going to ride Wildfire first and then come back and do an American Plunge afterwards. All right, guys, we are headed towards Wildfire right now. Put all our stuff in a locker and uh, we're gonna head down and get on okay it says to ride we go this way and observation deck in the back of the building so i guess we want to go this direction i'll get some footage after we ride 
and uh, hopefully as well as while we ride. I have seen others that have filmed their rides, so I don't think it'll be a problem. And uh, there is the coaster looking through the trees. Guys, check this out in the queue. This is pretty cool. Everything is themed so well here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I don't have the additional mic hooked up because I am riding a coaster and I didn't want anything loose. Going back into the station right now. All right, well, I guess in line, make sure you have any and all the loose articles ready for you to go. This is what it's half that. It's not what's going to be involved in packages and anything else. You don't want to talk to us on the drive. Anyway, let's take a look at the coaster. is this is probably a B&M coaster. You can see it's got a lot of inversions. Pretty smooth ride for the most part. Lots of fun. That part was really cool. And then I enjoyed the end as well. Another loop down there towards the end and then uh, you loop around and uh, that's the end of the ride. It's, it's a fairly short ride. Not not super quick, but still a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And there was no wait, we were a walk on. And of course, you can get your ride photos here. And then, just like any ride, you exit through the gift shop. And they have lots of different things in here as well. There's wildfire t shirts, there's hats, all kinds of different theme park apparel. And of course, it's themed extremely well. Check out the airship above. How cool is that? It's got wings. It's flapping. Pretty neat. Alright guys, here's another view of the airship. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We also have a, a bunch of sodas over here on ice in a bathtub. Alright guys, we are going to ride American Plunge. It's a uh, log ride here. Looks like a lot of fun. I'm waiting for one. I hear it going up right now. It should be coming down in just a second. Oh, here they come. Oh, yeah. And here's where we're going to get on. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we got on the log ride with no problem so let's see what happens oh we're going in a tunnel this should be cool oh what's this guy doing out here that looks a little shady what are you doing buddy the frog's gonna squirt us Now we're in a kind of 
have a wooden uh, tunnel here. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. Oh, we're going to go up here. This is where we go up, guys. It's just been kind of a nice little floating ride up until this point. But now, we're getting ready to head up the hill. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, we're going up the hill. Gotta hang out of the rails. Alright guys, here we go. Here's the plunge. Oh, my shirt is soaked, but it feels good. I feel cooler. <laughs> my feet are like wet. <laughs> Woo. Well, guys, American Plunge was kind of fun. It's nothing super special. I did like the fact that there's lots of tunnels in there, and we did all get a little bit soaked on that ride, but it, it was still fun, and my, my gosh, I feel so much cooler now, so can't wait till we do the next one. Over here it says powder keg and that's what we're looking for hopefully we're gonna ride on this very soon there's a lot of different uh, things going on there's a stage show over here maybe we should go to this real quick we're over in this area so I think we should go check this out and then go ride powder keg so I went over to grab some of these uh, twisted taters and check this out the donkeys while walking around doing a meet-and-greet it's better than Universal hey donkey All right, guys, so we ended up getting the Lumberjack Twisted Taters. It's got cheese and bacon on it, and they're pretty darn good. This happy little establishment, and I'll be your host for the next little bit. Are y'all ready for a good time? Yeah! Well, we got a fantastic show for y'all today, and I think now is a good time to introduce you to those folks in charge of making our show great. First, perch tie atop that dumb waiter. It's our own technical genius, Miss Behaven. And working hard for y'all behind the bar, it's Miss Anita Float. And I want to float. They have a new expression that silver dollar way that tells you when a party is the time for the day. While we're in the saloon, I just wanted to point out, I thought this was kind of funny. There's portraits up on the wall, and look up there. It's Colonel Sanders up there on the wall. That's hilarious. And the ladies from the show are doing a little photo op with guests. And my daughter wants to take a photo, so I gotta go over and get in line. Well guys, this saloon show was a lot of fun. Really good show, very entertaining, funny, a little bit of magic, a little bit of comedy, and a little bit of showmanship, so I really enjoyed it. Um, we're heading over to Powder Keg, and I just noticed this in front of me. And right over here, before the entrance to Powder Keg, is Mortimer's Magic Box. It's a magic shop, and uh, this is kind of cool. I haven't been in a magic shop at a theme park in a long time. You got all kinds of different things in here, different magic tricks you can buy. Some of them are gag-style magic tricks, and they even have some more expensive stuff up here. All right, guys, here it is, the entrance to Powder Keg. And, uh, of course, just like everything else, it's super themed. There's lots of different places to check out on the way up here. There's also some restrooms back here. 
and some more shops. There's a sign shop over here. This one looks like painted signs. And over here we've got some uh, jerky. Yep, Smokehouse Jerky Company over here. Again with the theming, there's a mill over here with some gears. And here it is, the entrance to Powder Keg. You guys can see the fire inside. There's the coaster and boom, they're gone. All right, next on our list is a coaster that's over this way. And there's two ways you can go underneath this uh, train bridge. If you go this way, you're gonna get wet. But if you go this way, you'll stay dry. It's a nice way to cool off. Just past the uh, train bridge is this area here that looks like it might be an area for kids to play. Though I'm not quite sure how they would get up there. Maybe not, because the staircase comes down back behind this wall. I'm not sure what the point of this bridge is. It does look like it used to be a playscape at one point. There's also a uh, Cokes and Floats spot over here. This would be a very fun ride with a lot of people, but unfortunately it's a very slow day. There's not a lot of people here. You get on these rafts and you get water cannons, you just have to uh, spin the uh, little crank there and you can shoot people with water. You can shoot bystanders standing off to the side. They can shoot you back or you can shoot other people on other rafts. There's a few places they kind of uh, crisscross areas so you can shoot them. You can see the little cannons there and the cranks. Over here you can see where you might be able to shoot each other where the two rafts would kind of pass each other by. And uh, this area here is where you can shoot other people. And I'll give you an example of that if I can here. Guys, in case you're wondering, this is called Tom and Huck's River Blast. And like I said, there's not a lot of people. I don't understand why nobody's riding this then, unless they just don't want to get wet. But it seems like it'd be so much fun if you had a bunch of people here. All right, it says giant barn swing this way, but I think this is also the way to Outlaw Run, which is what we're looking to ride next. It said it was this way. There was a, uh, a sign painted on the ground said Outlaw Run this direction. Oh, here it is. Here's another one on the wall here. So I think we're headed the right way. There is the uh, giant barn swing. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. I do enjoy the theming though. The theming here is amazing. It's set up like a giant barn. How cool is that? They have these uh, mini drop towers. They have these mini drop towers over in Dollywood too. Not very high. And coming up in front of us is Outlaw Run. Get a sign for it right over here. It's also a stagecoach out here.
and it looks like this might be the entrance right here. Here's the Rapids ride. I don't recall the name of this. We have, we've not been to this park before, so I don't know all the names until I actually get close to them. But this looks like a lot of fun and a good way to cool off. And uh, I think I might want to do this. So let's see if we can uh, get over here and ride the Rapids. Definitely going to get soaked when we ride this. Oh yeah, look at that. Alright guys, it's time to head over to the train. Kind of a windy, steep, paved area to get up to the train. You can see we can look down on the uh, Tom Sawyer river rafts there and see what I'm talking about about the theming look at I just look at this area all kinds of flowers on the way up to get to the train area so guys this park is absolutely massive and unfortunately they're not open late at all we got this uh, spot here called the uh, bears at the holler here and they have different stuffed animals inside. Looks like they have something similar to uh, Build-A-Bear in there as well. And over here there is a carousel. A lot of people are riding the carousel. It's odd because it looks like one half is full of people and the other half is empty. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get on the train here. What are y'all waiting for? Get on the train. Unless you have a medical emergency. Also, please keep hands, arms, legs, and feet inside the train and off that running board to the left hand side. All right. Here we go, guys. Stop the train. If you haven't seen them, next time we come to the park, put them on your to go list. On your right hand side through those trees, you'll see a giant tower. That is actually part of our water ride, Mystic River Falls. Highest drop on the water ride in the Western Hemisphere, and half a million gallons of water going through that ride in any given moment. So go enjoy that and get cooled off. Get getting a little toasty. Also, Wilson's Barnes Farmer, Russ and King.
inside we've got Outlaw Run. That's their house. Well, no, it's a lot. Push down the board. Yeah, it's been me upside down. Not once, not twice, but three times. Here they go. Also, not the ground too. That's right, folks. Outlaw Run, we're the good guys. Always win. And, uh, Speaking of outlaws, not trying to alarm anyone, but I received news in the depot that Alfie Ralphie Bowen had busted out in front of my prison and I've been seen here in time. That's not some of stuff for us to sample. If you'd like to try some, raise your hand for me. All right, I see you. We'll drop you up and we'll pick you up on the way back. And I do mean pick you up. Okay, let's see if we can scare them off. Shake your fist at them and call them ugly. Y'all, it's not gonna scare them out, oh, piece of cheese. I said shake your fist at them bones and call them what they is ugly! Yes, ladies. There you go. Uh, Hercules, Hercules. Oh. Pull it! We did not come out here to see that. Get up here. What are you doing stopping my train in the middle of the woods? Stop to the warn you. About what? Your gears! Yay. Yes, there's not a big stuff we think we didn't ever just see up there around that bend. He told us you gotta take your war stick. Swing it! Swap it! Get hit nothing. Why can't they hit nothing? We believe they're New York Yankees. <laughs> Boy, there have been Yankees out here in 62 and a half quarter years. 62 and a half quarter years, they're back. They're back. Yes, they're back and they're mean. They're really, really mean. Yeah. This right here, this is my brother Ralphie. Everybody say, hi, Ralphie. Hi, Ralphie. What you got here today is a stick up. Ah, ha, 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 ha. It's a stick with us. Oh, come on now, folks. You got to laugh at something. That's the best joke in the whole show. It goes downhill real fast after that, I promise. Alright folks, train robber time. Get your hands in the air and that scared so we can rob ya. Hey, Come on, everybody's kids. Oh, ah! Looks like you just drowned some of these folks are actually crazy enough to do it. Listen to a blockhead like me. They got their hands up back then. Ground me. Ground me. What? What are you doing? I got my hands up from acting scared, like you said. You're on my side. That's what scares me. Get down here. Well, guys, the train ride was kind of fun, and I like the fact that they stopped and uh, the guys stopped the train and had the little uh, play going on there. It was kind of interesting. No, guys, I didn't mix up the footage. We're in a Christmas store. We stopped here to uh, come in and cool off. It has really gotten unbearable outside. It's 94 degrees. And uh, we had to come inside to cool off, and it, it kind of does feel a little bit like the North Pole after being outside in that 94 degree weather. So hopefully we can get to two more rides. I want to try and do Fire in the Hole and also Time Traveler. We'll see what happens. Um, Time Traveler's right across the street, so hopefully we get to that one. And uh, I think we can still get to Fire in the Hole. I think we'll be okay. But i got to cool off for a few minutes. It is so hot. All right, guys, give you a quick view of this Christmas store. they got all kinds of trees decorated. Tons and tons of different ornaments in here. Lots of other Christmas things, statues and stuff to adorn your mantle. Above your fireplace, there's little Christmas houses. And they even have nutcrackers. And check these out, these are interesting. It's like a uh, snow globe nutcracker here, except uh, instead it's got lights and it looks like a Santa Claus and reindeer that circle around. So the name of the store we went into is Christmas Hollow. And the area we are headed to next is right over here. It's the Time Traveler.
was our biggest time jump yet. All you gotta do. All right, guys, I want to tell you a little bit about Time Traveler. It was awesome. That is by far my favorite ride here. It is incredible. You never know which way you're going. It's, uh, it's very disorienting in a good way, and it's super smooth, and it's fast. Highly, highly recommend riding it. All right, guys, we are heading over to the fire district right now. It feels like the entire park is the fire district because it's so darn hot today. But uh, we're heading over there to ride Fire in the Hole. And the thing that kind of sucks, this this really, I don't understand this. We're, uh, you know, we're still a couple weeks from Labor Day. They close at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Like every day now. It's kind of crazy. And it uh, didn't give us a whole lot of time. They don't open until 9.30 in the morning. So, you know, you're not talking about a whole day to cover a big, big park. So we haven't had a chance to see a lot of stuff. And uh, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. And here we are, the fire district. Finally made it over here to ride fire in the hole. They have quite a few rides over there. Most of these are themed with Americana or something to do with uh, fire engines. This one's all Americana for the kids, right? Got a uh, little splash pad over here. Nothing makes a fireman happy like the sweet treats available at Brown's Candy. And over here, a drop tower. Over on this side, there's a uh, ride with Dalmatians. There's the Firehouse Play Place. It's like a playscape inside. And they've got some uh, called something called Fireman's Flyers. Looks like a swing set there. And finally, up ahead, Fire in the Hole. Here it is guys, the sign is on fire because it's fire in the hole. We rode that one twice. Um, there was no line at all. It was a walk on both times. In fact, the, 
we could have stayed on the second time, but we got off and went through the circle and got back in. Q, which there was nobody there, we got back in the same coaster, I think, which is kind of silly, but that's what they made us do. Um, I like it a lot. Great dark ride, great dark ride with a little bit of a little bit of roller coaster mixed in. It's got some nice drops and uh, it's much better than the one in Dollywood. I never rode the original here, but from what I have been told, this is like superior in many, many ways, but it's the same story. Um, they've added that nice drop at the bottom. I don't think it had a big of a, as big of a drop at the bottom and it uh, definitely a good ride. This is one you should not miss. If you come here, come to the fire district, ride fire in the hole. And guys, when you exit the park, you exit through the gift shop. There is a ton of stuff in this area over here. And then if you're looking for even more, there's a whole different section over here with hats, t-shirts, they have water shoes. There's all kinds of stuff. There's even lockers over here if you want to lock your stuff up at the front. Um, every kind of t-shirt you could imagine, sandals, um, keychain, sunglasses, all kinds of stuff, even toys can be found over in this gift shop. Well guys, we found a press penny machine on the way out that actually is not broken. So hopefully we can uh, get a press penny here. And my daughter pointed out that being the luck that we've had, we kind of need a lucky penny. So we're going to go with the lucky penny here. Put my uh, dollar into the machine. There it goes. And the buttons will light up below. And we're going to select this one. There's our penny. Just dropped. Here it comes. And there it is. A lucky penny. Check this out, guys. Yet another gift shop we are walking through. Um, I wasn't expecting a second gift shop, but yeah, that's where we're going through right now is the second gift shop. Fire in the Hole merch over there. And uh, lots of different things in here. Looks like they're getting ready for fall. hats down here with their logo there's coffee and uh, jams and all the, probably all the stuff that we bought could be purchased in here um, we had it sent to the package pickup which we're gonna head over and do right now it says package pickup so that's where we are going well guys I did want to add a few details now that we're home and we've had time to take everything in I was a little disappointed with the short operational hours of the park Closing at 6 p.m. seems a bit ridiculous, especially since that's when it started cooling down for the day. I thought that they could have stayed open later, maybe had some sort of show in the evening, whether it's fireworks or uh, even a drone show or something simple. Uh, it was a little bit lacking on that part. As far as the theming goes for the park, it was definitely top-notch. This was a very well-themed park. Everything was... Uh, beautiful. Everywhere you looked, there was something to see. No space was wasted. Great park as far as that goes. But because of those limited operational hours, I don't know if I'd visit again. I was a little disappointed with that. Um, we paid quite a bit of money. It wasn't like it was a uh, discounted rate for a shortened day. And it wasn't that it was a weekday either because we noticed that even Fridays and Saturdays had the same exact hours. It just seems a bit ridiculous to close at 6 p.m. in the middle of summer. I don't know. Am I wrong? You guys tell me what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know, would you pay full price to go to a park that's only open from 9.30 till six? Well guys, we had an amazing time here at Silver Dollar City. Loved Time Traveler, amazing coaster. The Fire in the Hole ride, awesome dark ride with a little bit of thrill to it too. Um, we had a good time here and the theming is like above and beyond anything I've seen at most theme parks. It's absolutely beautiful. Every inch is decorated with flowers or shrubbery or something amazing. The, uh, the area that we went through first, Homestead Ridge or something like that, um, that was really cool seeing that house over 100 years old that the woman lived in until she was 90. Uh, it's just so much to see here. I gotta tell you guys, we should have come for two days. We missed a lot of stuff, a lot. There's so much to see here. There's a lot of pathways that go one way in, one way out, like going into the fire district. There's pretty much one way in, one way out. 
So there's a few things that we missed here and there. Uh, but I do have to say, this is an amazing park. I highly recommend it. Everybody was fantastic. All the staff were excellent. We had nothing but like great service from everybody we talked to. If you guys are in Branson, Missouri, you have to go to Silver Dollar City. Awesome theme park. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that compass so you can get subscribed and see more videos just like this. And remember, sometimes adventure is a little further away. And guys, check this out. It's, uh, it's after 6.30. The park closed at 6. And we are leaving, and it's still 91 degrees out.